Here we're going to show you what comes with our dome cameras that have a audio line in connector inside the camera. This camera has a pigtail that only has an RJ45 pigtail which is for PoE. It is a PoE IP camera. And then there's a 12 volt DC. You can choose to run it over a PoE switch not needing the 12 volt DC connector. So this just becomes uh, something vestigial. You don't need to even use it all. You can tape it up if you're mounting the camera outside. The camera also comes with these weather glands. Uh, these get placed on here. You first run your untipped cable through here and then connect it after you tipped it in here and then you cap it on. We have a video available. Uh, if you search for a weather gland on our site, you'll find it there. There's a video underneath the thumbnail. The other thing that comes with this camera is a, uh, a stencil to mount this on the wall or ceiling wherever you're mounting it. So you can use this as a guide to drill holes there. It comes with an Allen key and there's this little rubber piece that's usually um, if you're mounting the camera with the wire going straight back not to the side you would put this little rubber notch it slides in to the side right here this allen key is basically a, a hex key with i believe it's vt15 that's the bit here and you can also get a screwdriver like this to if you're installing multiple cameras to make your life easier uh, the bit is right here. It's a CRVT15. You can grab a non-motorized screwdriver. It's fine when you're unscrewing something. You got to make sure it doesn't collide with the casing of the camera. Otherwise, you're going to scratch it all up. But basically, unscrew it using your screwdriver. Make sure you don't scratch the camera. Or you get this uh, that's included in the box and unscrew it as well. This dome camera happens to be um, a design that's different from many other smaller domes. It is a little bit bigger in size. Um, if you were to compare it to a lens cap, that's how much bigger it is. It has a little notch on the side that shows you exactly where to put it back once you've removed it. You can kind of faintly see it right there. Now, remove the dome cover. It actually has a little chain here keeping it attached to the dome just so you don't lose it and uh, inside the camera you'll see that this is the lens assembly with the IR LEDs so you can actually um, angle the camera any way you want but be careful when you're mounting it there are infrared LEDs they don't collide with the inside of the camera because it'll cause lens glare so you have to take caution with that usually we recommend this type of dome to be ceiling mounted only or use a proper wall mount um, for it Inside the camera, you'll notice that it has a RCA connector. This is not for audio, it's a video, that's why it's yellow. It's a uh, analog, uh, for an analog tester. That's why RCA video, is, uh, that's, RCA video is always yellow. And then you've got a reset button in this camera, it says RST. There's an SD card slot here on the bottom. It has a little micro SD picture here, you can insert a micro SD here. It has a manual toggle for the motorized lens and you can toggle it from here or through the web interface and uh, then there is this assembly please don't touch this leave it alone it's meant to provide poe power to the camera um, there's a weatherproofing gasket inside here to insulate the wire coming in and then there's an alarm block the left hand connector says audio in and out and then there's a ground that's for audio so what you want to make sure is your microphone if you're connecting one which i'm going to show you in just a second the, the black wire for the microphone or the ground goes into ground and the positive wire goes into audio input and then there are alarm input connectors as well rarely does anybody tie an alarm to this but it is present on the camera now I'm going to show you how to connect a microphone into this terminal block that I just showed you in the previous section here is a microphone this is the audio pickup device really this is the electrode that picks it up here are two connectors. In this case, this is a 12-volt DC power input. It requires about 150 milliamps of 12-volt current. And this is an RCA audio input. This is not for video or this is not for connecting it right in there. This is audio that's video. It just happens to be made yellow. So how do we get it connected to the camera? This has a RCA and the audio is a two-lead wire. How do we accomplish that task? So we use what's called a video bailing. They usually come two in a pack. Here's what a video bailing looks like. On one side it has a terminal block to connect a two lead wire. Uh, on the other side is a video connector. Usually it's used to send a video signal but in this case I'm going to send an audio signal. I'm going to connect this to a RCA tip. That's a BNC female 
which is this. This is what it looks like, and an RCA male. So this BNC female plugs in here, and I've got it connected. Then I'm going to connect my RCA tip into the mic. So now I've got my mic via RCA into the video valen. If you're doing a good clean installation, you of course want to have a longer wire. The microphone sits outside the camera. You thread this wire into the camera, through the bottom of the camera. There is a grommet right here. You can actually punch a hole in there and run it through. It's a very thin wire. In my case, I'm using stranded. You can actually just use two leads that you rip out of a Cat5 E or Cat6 wire and put those two leads through, not the whole cable, just two small leads. Punch it using a small punch tool of some kind. Thread the cable through and connect it here. Now I'm going to show you how to connect this connector in there. So in my case, my red wire, there's a certain polarity to this. I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but one side is positive and one side is negative. My red solid is positive and my stripe wire is negative. The red wire is going to go into the audio in and the stripe wire is going to go into the ground. So what you do is in the audio in section here you basically use a screwdriver to open it up. You have to use a, a mini screwdriver like this to be able to manipulate this. So I'm putting it into ground. And then I put it into the audio in. Make sure they're tight. Don't unscrew them all the way out either because then you're going to break the terminal block. So now I've got it securely connected. I'm tugging on it. It doesn't come out. I've got a good secure connection. So now I have my microphone connected to the terminal block here and I'm tugging on the wire, it's not coming out, it's a good secure connection. That's what I'm trying to make sure. I'm going to use a power supply here. It's a 12 volt DC. It's, you can see here it's 12 volt. It's center positive in my case and it's uh, about a 1 amp. Microphone really needs only uh, 150 milliamps like I said before. This goes into, an, this connects into a wall outlet. And this end connects into the microphone and then you got a good secure connection. So now I'm going to help you make sense of all of this. We've got a PoE camera, RJ45 input connected to your PoE switch or PoE NVR and this doesn't get used. The mic is connected with a video bail and an RCA connector using a 2-lead wire into the audio input on the camera. And the mic is powered with a 12-volt power adapter. For power, you need to make sure you have a 110 outlet nearby the camera. This is not PoE. And here, you've got a um, RJ45 connector that's going back to your PoE switch. So this is one way to supply power to the mic. So now I'm going to show you a second uh, way to connect a microphone, or actually to power the microphone rather. We just discussed how to connect a 12 volt power supply to supply mic the power. Let's say you have this PoE camera and you really don't have access to another 110 line to connect that power supply to. So this is a PoE camera. It's getting PoE power being injected into it. You can use this device. It's called a PoE splitter. It actually has an RJ45 connector on one end. This brings in, takes the PoE power coming in from your switch or NVR. It takes it into, makes it into a data connection and separates the power out of it. So this becomes 12 volt. DC 1 amp total. As long as your camera is less than 12 watts, you can use this to supply power to the camera and to the mic. So what you can do is use a 1 to 2 power splitter. It takes a female DC to two males. So I'm going to connect it to my power splitter and then I'm going to do the connection hookup this way. I'm going to connect the network cable here one power connector goes to the camera, and the other power connector goes to the mic. So now, what I've done is taken PoE coming in, separated it to power, and then splits it into power twice, one to the mic, 
one to the camera and data to the camera. This will get your PoE camera working off of your PoE NVR or PoE switch. So it's a little bit more complicated for some people, but it actually makes the whole design a lot simpler. So all you've got is PoE coming in, power being separated out to mic camera, and data connectivity to your camera. And that's all. Hopefully you found this video useful, and then in the next section we'll show you how to enable the audio once you log in using Internet Explorer.